Good morning, wet shavers, coffee lovers, and podcast listeners everywhere. It's Mark with georgetune.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put on your earbuds, adjust your speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. Just to bring you up to speed, Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending soon before the next 3MB airs, or a piece of late breaking information that viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive, or something else regarding the wet shading world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning and welcome to the December 19th, 2022 episode of Second Cup. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays. My gosh, Christmas is right around the corner and hot on its heels. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Where did 2022 go? (laughs) Unbelievable. Before you know it, it's going to be 2023. But that's okay. We got some great content here in this morning's second cup. Thanks so much for joining me. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. Speaking of which, we have got an item here. Uh, This came courtesy of viewer Rodney Ripplinger. I've got the box right here. There it is right there. (laughs) This is something uh, for the coffee lover out there. And believe me, I've been using this. I love this. Thank you so much, Rodney. This is called the AeroPress. We're going to be talking about this later on in the show. If you're looking for a last-minute Christmas gift, check out the AeroPress. I'll have links below. It is absolutely wonderful. Just to tease it a little bit, you can make one to three cups of coffee, espresso, or cold brew in about a minute. Yeah, and I am definitely uh, enjoying a a wonderful cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee in my uh, new Dunkin' Donuts coffee mug that came courtesy of uh, viewer Douglas Thompson. Thank you again very much, uh, Douglas, for for this mug. And uh, I used the AeroPress, and it made a delightful, wonderful, smooth cup of coffee. So, yeah, we'll be talking about that a little bit later in the show. We also have some other items that are on sale. You're looking for for a last-minute shaving gift for the wet shaver in your life. We've got a couple of those that are out there as well on sale, and a couple of other things that are new uh, to, uh, to me and maybe to you also. Uh, one shaving soap that has launched. Well, we got a lot, a lot of great stuff uh, this morning. So thanks so much for tuning in. Again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. And uh, let's get right down to it. We've got some great topics to cover. And uh, we're going to kick it off right now with something from uh, viewer Mark Bagwell. Now, Mark Bagwell recently contacted me and he wrote, Just think, it's a good thing that they toned down the R41 in 2013. I can't even handle the razor as it is now. Or was it 2011? I think 2013. He continues, with great power comes great responsibility. And with so much aggressiveness in 2013, Mula tamed the beast with a redesigned open comb safety bar to make it less aggressive. And yet, it is still a safety razor to be reckoned with. The R41 was so aggressive, it was injuring way too many people. So they tamed it a bit, but it's still the most aggressive safety razor made. Now, let me stop right there because I received an R41 from viewer John Kaczynski. Uh, He had a shave with it. It gave him a a bit of a nick, and he decided that this, this razor is just far too aggressive for me. So he very kindly sent it along to me. I just did a review of this razor. I'm in the process of editing it. And I got to tell you, this is probably one of the most aggressive razors I've ever used. But here's the thing. I never knew that it was even more aggressive 
than it is now. That is absolutely <laughs> amazing. I mean, and we're going to be talking about Edwin Jagger and Mueller in this episode. And again, we're just kicking it off with the discussion here of the R41, the Mula R41. I'm holding this razor in my hand. I use the uh, Treat New Steel razor blade to have my shave with it. And uh, really, it, it really is a razor that you have to respect. It's got a lot of growl, absolutely. And uh, I had to slow down, lighten up my touch. Uh, I rode the cap. Uh, here and there during the shave, I really adjusted my technique for this. I was rewarded with a two-pass BBS shave uh, with about two days' worth of growth. Uh, that's what I shaved off. And I, 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 was, I was stunned at how efficient this was. But I really had to take my time and pay attention. I was not on automatic pilot as I am with a lot of other mild, efficient razors that I have. Uh, this one, really, you have to pay attention and you have to respect this razor. No doubt about it. Now, Mark also said sent something along from an article on the Sharpologist uh, website uh, from Mantic59, and I will link to this as well. So my thanks to uh, Mantic59. Uh, and uh, he wrote, Mula has apparently tweaked the design of their R41 razor that is nicknamed The Beast, Due to its aggressiveness that was causing problems for many, including myself, the end result is reportedly still aggressive but less harsh than the previous incarnation of the R41. I just bought a new R41 to compare the two, and you can go ahead and read that review and see how uh, those two R41s stack up against one another. Very, very informative article, and again, uh, my thanks to uh, Mantic59. He really is a great source of information, and my thanks to Mark Bagwell for passing that along. Mark also says, here is something else. Now, this came from the Shave Den, uh, the Shave Den Forum. Here is a comment from one of the uh, forum members. Uh, quote, around the early part of 2013, it was announced that another revised R41 model was being released by Mula into the European market. This newer model supposedly was a kinder, gentler version of the 2011 tooth comb head design. There was much forum discussion about this redesign, and it wasn't really made clear as to why Mula felt this new razor design was necessary and what exactly did it entail. After reading reviews by users of this new R41, I was anxious to give it a go and find out for myself how it compares to the 2011 version. The consensus from users who have tried both the earlier 2011 model and this recent version is that the 2013 model is smoother, more forgiving, and yet still quite aggressive. Okay, so now with my interest peaked, I came across a used 2013 R41 for sale and snatched it up. <laughs> so there you go. It is smoother, uh, a little gentler, but it is still aggressive and still um, something you have to respect. And uh, Mark concludes here by saying, apparently they redesigned in 2011 and then again in 2013. You, meaning me, have the kinder, more gentle version. Ha <laughs> ha, I can only imagine what the others uh, were like or are like, uh, depending if you come across one. So there you go. So if you uh, come across a used R41, make sure you ask <laughs> when it was manufactured. Uh, because if you've got something in 2011, you're going to have something that has a lot of growl. If you get something in 2013 forward, it's going to have growl, but it's not going to have uh, the kind of growl that the uh, earlier version has. So that's kind of the long and short brief history on the R41. My thanks to Mark Bagwell for all that really wonderful information about this. I'm editing the video review of this R41. It was a fantastic shave. I don't know if this is a razor I can use every single day, but uh, you know what? We'll see. Uh, we'll see, and I'm going to try to compare it to some other uh, more aggressive razors I have, but um, really, I, I was impressed at the shave it gave me again. 
really had to adjust my technique a lot, and I really had to take my time and, above all, pay attention to the shave. No doubt about it. Hey, Mark, thanks very much for the information. Really, really do appreciate it. Staying on the topic of Mula razors, and again, my apologies if I'm mispronouncing the company name. I've heard it pronounced Mula and also Mula. I'm not exactly sure which pronunciation is correct. I'm just going to go with Mula. Anyhow, uh, Tim Whitcup recently sent me an email, and he wrote, Did you know that Edwin Jagger DE89 and Mula R89 have the exact head design? He went ahead and also sent information from an article by Mantic 59 on Sharpologist. Again, Mantic 59 has a wealth of information. I encourage you to get up to sharpologist.com and visit it because there is some really, really great information regarding the traditional wet shave and shaving gear. Uh, here's the headline, the Edwin Jagger versus Mula Razorhead, myth busted. And here's what the article says. There has been a lot of speculation in the old school wet shaving community about the origin of the DE89 razor's head design. It bears a striking resemblance to the Mula R89 head, and some think it is the same head, or at least the early DE89 heads were provided by Mula. But according to Edwin Jagger, quote, the heads for each company were sourced independently. Edwin Jagger did not source through Mula. Edwin Jagger has never relied upon Mula to supply DE89 safety razor heads. All Edwin Jagger commercial requirements were and still are sourced directly from the exclusive tooling, unquote. And then the article goes on to say, but the design did go through some changes. Again, according to Edwin Jagger, quote, the first designs from 2008-2009 were quickly copied by low-cost copycat manufacturers, we believe based in India and Pakistan and China. Changes were introduced soon after 2010 and then 2012. The modifications focused on thread performance and exclusive shape design with company logo identifications, unquote. Now, I'll go ahead and link this article so you can read more about that. But Tim did go on to say that he was going to contact uh, Mula and Edwin Jagger. He wrote, I emailed both Edwin Jagger and Mula. Hopefully, I can get an answer from one or both. Now, here's the answer that he received from Mula. He has not received an answer from Edwin Jagger. Here's what Mula wrote back. And I'm going to read this exactly word for word, because I think what they did was they wrote in German and translated to English, so something might be lost a little bit in the translation, but here's their answer. Hello, Tim. Thank you for contacting us at Mula. I'm more than happy to fill you in this. Looks like we almost have the same heads, but we are not collaborating. This usually a discussion between the R89s. Hope this helps. Have a great day ahead. And this gentleman's name is Yugo, J-U-G-O, Customer Experience Team with Mula Shaving. Now, here's where I want to point out. Uh, they say here, he says here in his email, we are not collaborating. Uh, and I take that to mean that they are not manufacturing each other's razor head. Interestingly, I had a discussion with Mark Bagwell, and he gave me a lot of insight into the ins and outs of this situation uh, the razor heads between Mula and uh, Edwin Jagger. Uh, and he believes uh, that uh, they are not manufacturing each other's razor heads, but they quite possibly collaborated with each other in designing the razor head. In other words, they sat down and said, hey, let's design a razor head together, and then you make yours and we'll make ours, and you have your tooling and we'll make our tooling, that sort of thing. Uh, that, may, that may not be that far off, uh, and it'd be interesting if we can get some uh, documentation on that. But that's kind of what uh, Mark uh, believes to be the case. I don't think he's far off, to be perfectly honest with you, because as he points out to me, you could blindfold someone and hand them a DE89 and have them shave with it, and then hand them 
uh, an R89 and have them shave with it, and you're not going to be able to tell the difference. These razors are identical, it seems like that. Now, I don't have an R89. What I do have is an R89 that's been rebranded. For instance, I have a Q Brothers razor, which is a rebrand of the R89, and it's made by Mula for the Q Brothers brand. So, you know, it's not too far off to um, uh, make that leap that uh, Mula and DE89, uh, Mula and Edwin Jagger sat down and designed a razor head together. <laughs> it's not that far off. I think Mark Bagwell is really onto something. I really do. Uh, because if Mula is manufacturing for other brands, uh, then uh, why, would, you know, why wouldn't they sit down with somebody and say, let's design a razor together or a razor head together? I <laughs> just, you know, I, I think that's probably the case. But anyhow, it is an interesting discussion. If you have any other information regarding this, please pass it along to me at mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I'll share it on the podcast and also on the Monday morning mailbag. Uh, just a really, really interesting discussion. My thanks uh, to Tim Whitcup for uh, sending this information along, uh, all the links, and I'll have links to the Sharpologist article where you can read a little bit more about it. And again, my thanks to Mark Bagwell for all the great information and background information. Uh, we had a really, really great, great conversation, and uh, just I got a lot of nice information from Mark. So um, again, I, I would just like to see some uh, documentation on this, so if anyone can point to any of it, that supports um, the theory that we're <laughs> that we're floating here. That would be great. So thanks again, Mark. Thanks again, Tim. Really, really do appreciate it. Tim Whitcup also gave us a heads up on some safety razors that are on sale right now on Amazon. I will have the links below. The Parker 56R heavyweight double edge safety razor with five Parker premium platinum stainless steel razor blades, classic three piece design in graphite with a graphite handle. This is 20 bucks off, $22.36. Yeah, this is a really nice price on a terrific, terrific razor. I have the uh, 56R in rose gold. It is wonderful. I like it a lot. And since we're talking about the Edwin Jagger and uh, Mule razor heads, know that the Parker razor head, is, again, very similar to the EJ and Mule razor heads, although I think it has a little more aggression, a little more efficiency than those two razor heads. So it really is a terrific razor. If you've seen me uh, review, uh, if you've seen my review of the uh, Parker 56R, uh, it really is a terrific razor and it gives a really, really nice shave. And here you can get the 56R with the graphite handle uh, for about $22.36. That is a really, really nice price. So if you're looking for that last minute Christmas gift for the wet shaver in your life, check that one out. Also, Tim passed this along. Bevel. Uh, the bevel safety razor with brass weighted handle and 10 double edge safety razor blade refills. Uh, this is normally $49.95. It's 50% off, $24.96 on Amazon. Again, another great price on a very, uh, very interesting razor. Uh, really a striking design to it. And uh, I don't know much about it beyond the fact that the bevel name has been out there for quite some time. It's a very unique design, and uh, you can read more about it on their product page. I will uh, link that uh, so that you can get up there. But yeah, $24.99, 50% off a bevel razor. And of course, the bevel name it just it just is uh, rather famous. I mean, it's, got a, it's a very, very known brand is what I'm saying. So if you've always been interested in a bevel razor or giving one as a gift, now's the time. Also, uh, Tim passed this along. The Pearl K2 dual handle double edge safety razor made from brass. It's a premium razor with two handles. You get a long handle, you get a short handle, and 10 premium stainless steel blades. 
Uh, and uh, this is 31% off. You can pick this up for $23.99. I believe the regular price is almost $35. So there you go, the Pearl K2. So there are three great razors, three great prices. The 56R, about 20 bucks off, it's $22.36. The, uh, the Bevel Safety Razor, 50% off, just under $25. And the Pearl K2 Dual Handle Safety Razor, uh, that is 31% off, $23.99. Tim, thank you so much for the heads up on these deals, folks. Again, if you're looking for a last-minute Christmas gift for the wet shaver in your life, check these out. I'll have the links below. Viewer Raul Alberto De La Rosa informs us of a brand new shave soap out on the market. It's called 1955, and it's from Rex Supply Company. Now, he also provided a link to the review. The review is done by Matt Pisarsik. He shows you the soap, talks about the background of it, how long it took to develop it, and has a shave and a review for us. So really neat to see a brand new shaving soap out there under the Rex Supply Company brand. So if you are an owner of an Ambassador Adjustable Safety Razor or the Envoy or the Council, uh, here, you've got a shave soap from Rex Supply Company that'll pair up nicely with any of those razors. And they are wonderful, wonderful safety razors from the folks at Rex Supply Company. So I'll uh, provide the link below. My thanks to Raul Alberto De La Rosa uh, informing us about 1955 shave soap from Rex Supply Company. Raul, thank you very, very much for the information. Folks, I'll have the link below. Speaking of new shave soaps, we've got a new one right here in the shave den. This comes from Fernando Saraiva and Master Soap Creations. Of course, Fernando is the gentleman behind Master Soap Creations. They are a South African-based artisan soap maker. And Fernando very, very kindly sent this to me via the folks at the Razor Company. Thank you very, very much, Fernando. We originally reviewed the uh, Dark Blue Shave Soap from Master Soap Creations, uh, and that came courtesy of Andy Amaya and the Wet Shaving Store. And uh, I loved the scent, and I loved the performance of it. And here we have uh, another one from Master Soap Creations, Eros, God of Love. We have the Shave Soap and also the Splash. So my thanks to Fernando for uh, sending this along. Uh, it is an absolutely... Wonderful, wonderful scent. The scent is inspired by Versace Eros EDP, and it is terrific. The uh, product page reads, love, passion, beauty, and desire. These are the key concepts of the Eros fragrance. Eros, god of love, able to make people fall in love with his bow and arrow. You know, <laughs> aptly describes this scent, no doubt about it. Get a lot of these uh, fragrance notes. Top notes. Mint oil, lemon Italy or pearl, green apple. The heart notes are tonka bean, Venezuela, ambroxan, geranium flower. The base notes are vanilla Madagascar, uh, very ver, oak moss accord, cedar wood from Virginia, and cedar wood from Atlas. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful scent. I'm really looking forward to reviewing this. I will have a link to this up on the Razor Company uh, where you can uh, check it out for yourself, but it is a really delightful intoxicating scent. So my thanks to uh, Fernando and also the folks at the Razor Company for sending us along both the shave soap and the splash. We'll be talking about this on the Monday morning mailbag as well, and I'm going to get a review done on it because it really is a terrific scent. And of course, Master Soap Creations, uh, Artisan Shave Soap, Really, really wonderful performance from uh, from their product line. So my thanks again to Fernando and the Razor Company. Folks, Eros, God of Love from Master Soap Creations. Now this is late breaking news and I got this via Mark Bagwell. W.M. Newman and Company now has shaving cream, the old fashioned soda shave cream in stock, ready to go. Get up there and get it. This is infamous. Uh, this is Mantic 59's or one of Mantic 59's favorite scents. 
And Mark Bagwell reports that the ingredients in the W.M. Newman line of products is just wonderful, high quality ingredients, and it just delivers a wonderful, wonderful shave. Now, I'm going to be reviewing this because I, I ran up there and I got a bottle of the shave cream. The shave soap in the old-fashioned soda scent is not up there at the time I'm recording this. Who knows? Maybe when you get up there, after you listen to this podcast, it'll be there. But uh, I've heard great things about W.M. Newman and Company's shave creams and shave soaps. So uh, believe me, this old-fashioned soda scent is supposed to be marvelous. Uh, think, uh, <laughs> think small town USA, soda fountain, root beer, that sort of thing. This is what, this is my understanding of it. Their product details, uh, uh, specify the following after countless hours, numerous formulations and refinements, we are proud to now offer one of the finest and most comprehensive shave creams available blended with the finest ingredients to include premium oils, Silk protein, glycerin, aloe, shea butter, essential oils, botanical extracts, and more. This formula creates a terrific, creamy, dense lather and leaves your skin smooth and moisturized. It can be lathered up with a shaving brush or with just fingers. Yeah, and this scent, this scent is, it comes in a pump bottle, and this scent is really, really supposed to be marvelous. And I'm really looking forward to reviewing it and trying it myself. And um, there you go. Just premium ingredients and uh, just a a wonderful pump bottle for the shave cream and uh, just a fantastic, fantastic uh, scent. Old fashioned soda. Get up there now and check it out. Again, uh, Mark Bagwell reports that it's marvelous. He reports it's a marvelous scent. Uh, and uh, Mantic 59, from what I understand, one of Mantic 59's uh, favorite scents. So it's been out of stock for quite some time. And that's why Mark Bagwell gave me a heads up. He said, look what's available right now on W.M. Newman & Company. Shaving cream, old-fashioned soda scent. Yeah, and um, would, like to, would like to get, would like, I would also like to try it in the shave soap. It's not yet uh, available this scent is not yet available in the shave soap, but who knows? You know, maybe within the next day or two, it will be. But at least the shaving cream is available. So if you want to try something special, give W.M. Newman and company a look. I've heard really, really great things about them. And I will definitely have a link below to the uh, old-fashioned soda shave cream. Uh, thanks again to Mark Bagwell for the heads up on this. Really do appreciate it, Mark. Now, as promised, we're going to talk about the AeroPress coffee press. My thanks to Rodney Ripplinger for sending this along. I've been using it for the last couple of days, and I love this. This is really a neat way to brew a cup of coffee. Now, uh, as they say on their product package here, smooth, rich, delicious. And uh, they asked the question on one of the side panels here, Why is AeroPress the better coffee press? Smoother, richer flavor without bitterness. One-ninth the acidity of French press. Makes American coffee, espresso style, or cold brew. Ready in about one minute. No grit. Cleanup takes seconds. Durable, compact, and light. Ideal for home, work, and travel. Absolutely spot on on all of those bullet points. Really a neat coffee press, and it's a coffee press. What you do is you boil water, you heat up your water, and then you have uh, this coffee press. You have a base tube, so to speak, and on the bottom of that you have uh, a little area where you can put a a little filter that they provide you with. So you uh, unscrew the little uh, filter area and you put in that filter and screw it back in. You put that base tube on top of your coffee mug. Then you uh, just add a scoop of your favorite ground coffee. Now they they say that you should use finely ground coffee. I'm using all kinds of ground coffee. I'm not having any problem at all. Then what you do is you add your uh, warmed water, your hot water to that. And then you take uh, an inner plunger and you just 
uh, press that into that base tube and it's, it just squeezes that water through that filter and it just simultaneously brews that coffee, presses it through into your coffee mug and you have a freshly brewed cup of coffee. It is wonderful. Uh, I, I really enjoy making a cup of coffee this way. So all I'm doing is I'm putting my tea kettle on the stove, I'm heating it up, and then after the, the, uh, the water is nice and hot, I'm setting that aside, and then I'm going ahead and I'm making my coffee, scooping it into the, the coffee press. And uh, there are a variety of ways you can, you can brew your coffee. Um, now, Rodney also sent along a link to uh, a, a channel where this, uh, this woman talks about using uh, a coffee press and other ways to brew coffee. And I will link to that video uh, and where she demonstrates another way to use the AeroPress uh, to brew a cup of coffee. And you can kind of go up to her channel and look around and see how she uses this, this coffee press and how she makes uh, a cup of coffee. And I've used the method that she describes, and I've used the straightforward method that they have in the directions. Each one is, is terrific. I mean, I really, really do enjoy making a cup of coffee with, uh, with this coffee press. I've never used a coffee press before. It's a lot of fun, uh, and it's just, it's just three steps. All you do is add coffee and water. You stir it a little bit. You stir it a little bit. Uh, and you press the coffee right into the mug. That's it. That's all you're doing. And there are a variety of methods there where some don't like to stir. They just let it sit a little bit. Uh, and um, a lot of variation is what I'm saying. So it, it just raises the bar on brewing coffee. It becomes more of an art, <laughs> an art form. Really, it is. And it is terrific. So if you want to really become a little more involved uh, in, your, in, in making a cup of coffee, boy, this device is terrific. And again, it's another great last-minute Christmas gift if you're looking for, for one for the coffee lover in your life. I am just loving this. It's absolutely fantastic. I've never used a coffee press before, and I guess they've been around for a while. This is my first one, and I think, you know, based on what I'm, what, what I'm seeing here and what I've experienced, I, I don't think I need to get another one. This is it. I think this is the, I think this is the top of the mountain right here. The AeroPress, uh, the better, the AeroPress, the better coffee press is what they have on the package here. And they, uh, it includes coffee filters. It's made in the United States. I will have links below so that you can uh, check this out. Again, a great last minute Christmas gift for yourself or the coffee lover in your life. Rodney, again, thank you very, very much for a very, very thoughtful gift. Folks, we will be talking about this on the next Monday morning mailbag. Uh, it absolutely is fantastic, and I can show it to you on camera and how it works and that sort of thing. It really is terrific. I like it a lot. Thanks again, Rodney. Folks, I'll have links below to the AeroPress Coffee Press. And before we get out of here, I have to recommend a holiday movie, a Christmas movie. Everyone knows this movie. Everyone has seen this movie, Home Alone. What a perfect Christmas movie. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite Christmas movies. I I defy you not to tear up at the end. I, I tear up at the end every single time. Now, a lot of people uh, tear up right as uh, Kevin is looking out the window at his elderly neighbor uh, reunited with his uh, family. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, me, uh, it comes when uh, the mom finally makes it back home. And just think about it. Um, I'm starting to tear up a little bit right now. Uh, just a terrific, terrific family Christmas movie. Just wonderful. I don't know what it was about this movie that resonated with audiences in, in, in such a significant way, but it did. Uh, it's about uh, Christmas, about family, about togetherness. Um, I, you know what? It just, I think it just touches all the bases. I really do. Uh, and it had some great performances. John Candy is just so memorable 
in his small role. It's just a standout for him. When you look at the airport scene and the mother is screaming at the ticket agent, trying to get on a flight to back, back to Chicago, look at John Candy in the background, off to the left. Just look at his body language and, and how he's reacting. It is just classic John Candy without saying a word at all. It's just hilarious. And uh, it's probably one of my favorite scenes, especially when he introduces himself to her. And, oh, yeah, it's just absolutely terrific. What a terrific movie, really. What a really wonderful, wonderful movie. So Home Alone, before uh, the Christmas season ends, really get up on one of your favorite streaming services or if you have the DVD, pop it in, uh, make uh, make some popcorn and just uh, get ready for a really enjoyable Christmas movie. One of my favorites and I'm going to be watching it this week. Um, yeah, brings back a lot of nice family memories as well because I saw this with family and uh, <laughs> it's just terrific. Home Alone, a wonderful, wonderful Christmas movie. And that wraps up another Second Cup. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe, and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or friend. My thanks to everyone who contributed to today's show. And I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together with you again on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that second cup.